basic to circuit analysis are instruments that are able to measure the various parameters, the current, the volts. And historically, this is from what's known as the D'Arsenval meter movement, basically analog meters. And even though that seems perhaps a little archaic in our day and age, the circuit analysis associated with it is very useful and it still shows up in AP physics. Moreover, the meters that are based on this construction are still around. So here's an example of a multimeter that measures current resistance, voltage, DC or AC. In fact, I still have a meter like that, my very first one from the 70s was one of these meters, not this particular one. And but they really do show up still. So we have a lot of you know analog meters that are maybe not showing volts or millivolts or current of any sort. Uh, but like for instance here for a, a music system, it may show the the audio level. And you have other kind of meters. In fact, even in my truck, in my my hobby truck, I have various analog meters that are showing the performance or status of certain things like the exhaust gas temperatures or the boost pressure and they're based on a very fast responding analog meter and I still find it very useful even more so than digital meters because they act essentially instantaneously instead of averaging values and then displaying them where the refresh time is every you know second or two that can make a difference when you're looking to see dynamic performance and you want to know have an instant assessment of what's going on well here is a image of the guts of this basic type of meter movement there's a movable iron rotor in here with a with with a coil and this is an iron core laminated and just kind of showing functionality a little bit we have the meter leads all right so essentially a current flowing through this coil will interact with the poles, north and south pole, to cause a torque, along with this little coil spring, to twist the dial and read the correct value. So that's it in a nutshell. And in case you want to see that a little more in a little more detail, here we have it broken out a little more. So this is kind of an overall picture. And again, we got these coils. Now these could be permanent magnets, these, these field magnets here or it could be an electromagnet where current flowing through an iron core produces the magnetic field but anyway this one is interacting with these to cause a, a twisting force either to align or anti-align as shown here and that causes you know that torque causes this dial to twist around so what's going to be interesting is this basic movement is common to, to all the analog meters and then it's just a matter of either to make a current meter or a voltmeter. The difference is it takes just a tiny bit of trickle current to cause the meter to turn here. So you're going to put like a series resistor in here, perhaps, or a parallel resistor, depending on what the application is, to enable this movement to translate into current or voltage, for instance. So let's take a look at some of those details. So let's do the analysis of an ammeter, recognizing, as I had just mentioned, that the basic guts or the coil assembly, the D'Arsenval movement for both ammeters and voltmeters is identical. And we're just going to see that we add resistors in such a way to make them one or the other. So here it is. The basic circuit itself is consists of the coil, and that's modeled as a coil in series with the resistor. Now really the resistance is part of the coil. This coil is a whole bunch of turns of very fine wire and so it has some, in, some inherent resistance. So that's this is essentially what I showed you on the on the previous slide, the picture, or the, the diagram. And then we have a current flowing in. We're gonna, we have the total current, we'll just call that I, just the, the current in the circuit that we're measuring. This shunt resistor is a, res a low resistance placed between the terminals of the, of the meter, basically. This is part of the meter. 
the shunt resistor is really what makes it an ammeter as opposed to something else. Why is it called shunt? Because it's a low resistance and most of the current shunts or passes through that resistor rather than through the meter. You don't want a whole bunch of current. Well, it doesn't take a lot of current through here to cause a deflection in the meter. In fact, it's just a little trickle current. We're going to call that the coil current, I coil. And then we have this shunt current, which is essentially all the current going through that. Essentially, I said, not quite. So we'll look at that little tiny distinction. So the example we're going to do is a meter that records full scale, where the meter swings all the way at 10 amps. And 1 milliamp is required through this coil to cause that full scale deflection. And some additional data is that when it's swinging full scale, there's 20 millivolts across this, inter this resistance. So the wire coil has 20 millivolts across it at full scale reading. All right, so what is the coil resistance then? The resistance of the coil is just the volts over the current. 20 millivolts over 1 milliamp is 20 ohms. So now we know how much resistance the coil has. It's 20 ohms. Now because this, whole, this coil is in parallel with the shunt resistor, their voltage is the same. So that's going to help us to do a calculation. So here we have 10 amps flowing in, 1 milliamp flowing around through the coil, which causes full scale deflection. But when that occurs, again, most obviously, all the rest of the 10 amps has to flow through this shunt. The meter goes from there to there. So it swings over. So the shunt, the shunt current is the total current minus the 1 milliamps. The voltage across the shunt. We've got to figure out what this shunt resistor is. Well, the voltage across it is 20 millivolts, 0.02 volts. So the current through it is 9.999, which is essentially 10. It's really going to be indistinguishable from 10. Getting the shunt resistance is just a matter of Ohm's law, the V over I. 20 millivolts over 9.999 amps, which is going to be... 0.002 ohms. We're not going to carry out a whole bunch of decimal places there. Basically, we're calling this 10. So 0.002 ohms is a very small value of resistance. And that's consistent with the whole idea behind a current meter. Any meter you put in a circuit should not disrupt, disrupt the performance of that circuit. So when you put a current meter in, A and B, you're putting it in series with something to measure the current flow. You don't want that operation to change what the circuit is doing. In that sense, you want this to be a short circuit. You want it to be 0 ohms. Well, it's 0.002 ohms. That's a small amount. And actually, for a, a high-tech or you know, really good meter, that shunt resistance effectively is going to be quite a bit less than this. It's going to be very, very close to zero ohms. All right, there's another way to do this to figure out that resistance. So just essentially doing the same thing, but a little different. So VAB, voltage from A to B, is I through the coil times R the coil. And that's also I through the shunt times the current in the shunt. So we can solve for the shunt resistor algebraically like this. And recognizing that the shunt current is I minus IC, coil current, all right? And so there's the numbers, and there's your value. So basically, 2 milliohms is the shunt resistance. And that will give you a pretty decent current meter. And, you know, you wouldn't plug this directly in series with the circuit because you have a 20 ohm resistor there and it would in general cause that meter movement to just slam over and probably cook the meter destroy it so you got to be really careful if you're actually working with a real meter like this and constructing it so that it's a proper current meter do the calculations first and then uh, you're good to go let me now go through an example of how you would take that basic meter and construct an ammeter out of it. And this is actually 
based upon a meter that I have that I can show you. And so here it is. We're going to construct this, this meter into an ammeter and so that it deflects and we need to take some measurements on it. So a full scale deflection, we need to know what the current is. So this little diagram here, just to clarify, this here is the meter in question. This amp meter and this volt meter are meters that we already have that we assume correctly measure those physical quantities. These are not what we're constructing. We're actually going to construct one of these, an ammeter. That's what this is. And here's a power supply with a resistor to limit the current. So we're, we're going to drive current through this, this movement and figure out what the full scale deflection current is. And when we do that, we get 5 milliamps. That's the my meter example. 5 milliamps will drive that coil swing all the way full scale reading. And then you got the voltmeter across here and you're measuring the voltage across that coil, that <clears throat> the resistance of the coil. And it's a, you find out it's 100 millivolts. All right, so that's good data. Therefore, we can figure out the coil resistance or just the resistance of the coil and that gives us 20 ohms. So we got a 20 ohm coil. And now we know that to make this a current meter, we need to put a shunt resistor across here. So somebody hands you a resistor, said, here is your shunt resistor. That's what you have to make this meter out of. And you need to determine what kind of full scale deflection current that corresponds to. In, in, in other words, at full scale, what is the current based on the shunt resistance? So you measure the shunt resistance. So you take the ammeter and voltmeter externally. And because that's that's what's going to go here. And so you take measurements on it. You know it's volts over current. And so you read 20 millivolts when you drive one amp of current through that shunt resistor. Now those values could be anything else. So let's just say you drive an amp through it and there's 20 volts across it. Well, that gives us 0.02 ohms. So your shunt resistor that you have to work with is 0.02 ohms. You now put it in or across, I should say, the meter. And now let's see what our full scale deflection current is going to be. We got 5 milliamps required to fully deflect the meter. So VAB, the voltage across there, is the coil current times the coil resistance. 5 milliamps, 20 ohms, 0.1 volt. So a tenth of a volt across there corresponds to 5 milliamps. That tenth of a volt is across the 0.02 ohm resistance. So the shunt current is V over R, 0.1 over 0.02, 5 amps. So when 5 amps are flowing through here, that will be the same voltage as this coil has, which was also consistent with driving 5 milliamps of current. So we got 5 amps going through the shunt. The current is just a little bit more. It's 5.005 amps, right? Because you have to add the 5 milliamps. That may or may not be significant. We may not care about that at all. But that will then be the full scale reading. If you have a full scale reading, it means you have 5 amps flowing through that circuit. Or even more specifically, 5 plus 5 milliamps.